So howdy, Reed Desert Boy here. You know, he did a video recently about if 9mm is so great, where's all the 38, you know? So let's talk about that for a minute. What might make the 38 such a great round to have for a weapon that's capable of chambering that? So today we're going to take a look at a few different ones that, uh, that I have as a hobbyist and enthusiast and talk about kind of what roles they might fulfill and uh, what makes them flexible and uh, useful. And uh, as you can see there, we've got a Colt, we've got a, a Ruger LCR, and we've got a Smith & Wesson. And so in no particular order, we'll talk about them and uh, some of the things that we carry them in, the holsters, and also, you know, speed loaders and speed strips. So, so let's take a look and uh, learn a little more. So here's another look at them out of the cases from bottom to top. The Colt Detective Special and 38 Special, the Ruger LCR and 357 Magnum, and the Smith & Wesson Model 686 uh, Performance Center in 357 Magnum. So, you know, very quickly, let's just talk for a moment so ammunition is a whole different different discussion. One of the things that makes these a little bit different is the ammunition. And this is a 357 Magnum, okay? It's a 125 green 357 Sig Sauer uh, jacketed hollow point. These are both Hornady uh, 110 grain FTX. Uh, they're kind of a top of, type of hollow point that has uh, like some polymer or plastic in there. Um, and they are essentially, these are all self-defense rounds. And one of these, this is a 38 Special Plus P, and this is a 38 Special. You can see they look very, very similar, but the difference is, is in the velocity, the feet per second when it's fired, the amount of energy inside the gun that needs to be rated for that energy, and the amount of foot-pounds or um, expected stocking power when it when it gets to the target so let's just kind of leave it at that but uh, you need to make sure you have the correct ammunition for the gun that you have and we'll talk about that in a minute in the ones that we're going to look at but i just wanted to show you that you can see the magnum is taller intentionally because they don't want it to be able to go into 38s okay 38s will go into a 357 and can be fired from them but not the reverse. That's not the not the intent, and that's why it was designed that way. So very quickly, let's perform a safety check. This is the Colt. One thing different about the Colt is that it pulls back. We open it up, and we can see that there are no rounds in here, so we can see that it is empty. The Ruger has a push button which you push right here and the cylinder comes out and we can see that it is empty and uh, we take the Smith & Wesson it uh, of course trying to do this backwards it slides forward and then it comes out and we can see it's also unloaded. Normally I press on the crane or some people call this the yoke. I don't normally press on the cylinder. So, um, <clears throat> so we've done that. We know they're all unloaded. So let's talk about the Colt real quickly. Once again, why would I get this? Actually, let's start with the Ruger because I started with this one. Why? Well, one thing when I did it, we were in one of these panic modes, and this is one of the few that was available. And I was glad that I ended up with it because this turned out to be very versatile. You know, um, this is known as Ruger LCR and 357 Magnum. It's 17.1 ounces. It's got a 1.87 inch barrel. It's five shots. It's made out of, uh, I believe it's called 400 uh, stainless steel. Uh, it's a type of, uh, of 400. Um, steel that's exceptionally strong that has a polymer grip frame and a hogue monotamer grip. It has a pinned uh, removable uh, front sight and then it has 
a notch back here. Um, and it's capable of firing the 357, the 38 Special, and the 38. So that makes it pretty versatile, right, overall. But it is double action only. The UFC, it does not have a hammer. So that's the one thing if you wanted to have single action. Overall length is 6.5 and height is about 4.5 inches. So anyway, that's the Ruger. And I got it because it fulfilled the role of being able to fire 357 Magnum for me. And it was what was available. And it's turned out to be very versatile. So then, after having that for a long time, not that I don't have other, other I haven't had other 357 Magnums or things like that, but I wanted to have something, I, I was looking to buy a Smith & Wesson Model 36 because I wanted a six shot. Remember, the LCR is a five shot, just having that one more shot. And it just happened I came across the Colt. And I did a little bit of reading on it, and I was able to get this. It's supposed to be a 1994 Colt Detective Special. It weighs in at about 21 ounces, so it's a little heavier. One of the things is it's six shots. It's also a two-inch barrel. It has a ramp sight with a, a notch in the back, so it's also a fixed sight like the LCR. It has rubber wraparound grips. And it's about six and three-quarter inches, so it's a little bit longer. It's a little bit heavier, and since it carries one more round, it's a little heavier. It's a 38 Special. In the manual, it says you can fire a limited amount of 38 Special plus P's, but you should send it back to the factory after X number of rounds. Since this is a gun that's about 25 years old, you know, I'm probably going to go easy on it. There's plenty of really quality 38 Special ammo out there. And for self-defense purposes, probably more than adequate in most cases. But the reason why I got this was I wanted to have that one more round, okay? And I wanted to have a double action, single action. Because with this, I can pull the hammer and fire single action if I wanted to. So that's the reasoning behind this. Lastly, I wanted a Heavy Duty 357 Magnum. As you can imagine, at 17 ounces, a Ruger is not the most fun gun to shoot 357 Magnums out of. I personally, because remember, I'm talking about my opinions and my thoughts and why I do things, do have, make myself shoot 357s out of this without a glove on and things from time to time. Because if I ever had to shoot it, I need to know how well I can shoot it and what it feels like. You have to make your own decisions about these kind of things. This is what I do. I bought this because I wanted a fully uh, capable 357 Magnum. This thing here is 34.4 ounces. Okay, it's got a two and a half inch barrel. It has a red ramp sight and the rear sights are adjustable. It's all stainless steel and it has wood grips. I also have some hog grips that I pr probably will think about putting on here I bought, but I really want to buy like some Altamont or some other more um, a little more comfortable grips. I did get a little blister from firing about 70 rounds of Magnum with this and 30 rounds of plus of uh, 38 Special of 38 Special plus P. This is capable of firing 357, 38 Special plus P and 38. And it is a seven round capacity. So as you can see, I have one that's five, one that's six, one that's seven, one that's got single action, double action, the two of them have single action, double action, one that's double action only which probably adds to its concealability. It's also the smallest of the ones. It also has, a, it's about an overall length of seven and a half inches. It has cut in the cylinder where you can use moon clips, which are kind of an alternative to speed loaders. And as I said, it has a red ramp front sight and adjustable in the back. This is called a Performance Center Model 686. This gun is over $1,100 new. This gun is about $6.99, I think, on the Ruger website. And uh, this one here, you have to look it up and see what the condition is. I paid about $7.50 for this. So, hopefully that's helpful. Here in a moment, we'll talk about how you might want to think about having something to reload them with. So, one of the most common ways to reload revolvers are speed loaders. They look like this. All of these speed loaders happen to be HKS, but there are many manufacturers out there. This is for the Colt. It has six rounds. 
This one is for the Ruger. It has five rounds. And this one is for the Smith & Wesson. It has seven rounds. Um, if you're going to use something like that, uh, what I do personally, I go make sure I go to the range and I practice using those. You need to decide yourself. There's also other alternatives out there. One of them is a speed strip. This would allow you, if you shot a couple of rounds, to be able to maybe, uh, you know, eject those couple of rounds out up in the cylinder and eject those and just put a couple in there. I also use it with something called a rask. Uh, it's made by Neomag, which is a clip that fits on here so it can kind of slide into your pocket. And uh, it's basically for the revolver. The R on the rasp part means for the revolver. So um, I find those to be very useful. So that's reloading, ways that you can reload it. So that's just give you an overview. Oh, one other thing, and uh, we've kind of We've talked about holsters. One other thing is you want to make sure if you have speed loaders, you have something to carry in them in. Most people have a case of some kind. This particular one happens to be Velcro. It's got belt loops. Um, there's other ones that are kind of open. It just depends on what you decide to do. So, as Free Desert Boy always says, be safe out there, whatever you're doing. And if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye.